So I wanted to talk about high ankle sprain dynamic testing today. Um, as you know, high ankle sprain involves the syndesmotic complex, AITFL, or tibiofibular ligament, we'll just call it. Um, so here's how to perform a dynamic test. Obviously, this is of interest to surgeons. They want to know, do I need to do a tightrope repair to restore stability to the joint? So you plonk and run down the anterior compartment. You might start to identify the interosseous membrane, run down until the tibia and the fibula become very closely opposed. AITFL has multiple bands, but I'm not going to point them all out because it's irrelevant for this. To get a really pretty picture, you've got to angle up on a 45 degree uh, oblique orientation up from the lateral malleolus. If you're in true trans, your uh, ligament will look really ugly and abnormal in everybody, but this is a nice normal one. We would see high ankle sprain on x-ray as diastasis, so an increased gap between the two bones. So in ultrasound, we've been doing some tests on rugby players to look for instability because some of our um, sporting team doctors are trying to manage patients in boots for six weeks rather than a tightrope repair. So here we go. We're going to dorsiflex the foot. We ask the patient to ram their heel into the bed at the same time to stabilise the heel. Obviously, I'm going to wobble around. That's normal. <laughs> I'm going to choose that little artery there as my visual landmark to try and stay in the same place. You could mark the skin if, if that's more reliable. Then while dorsiflexing, you internally rotate. Keep pushing hard. Keep dorsiflexing. This is where the money is. So on the, on the dorsal plus external rotation, that puts the syndesmosis under the most stress. And we're performing these in people who have usually got a complete rupture. So they, they may experience pain if it's quite a fresh injury. That's okay. You're not going to make it worse than what it already is. And we're looking for widening of that joint space. So even one millimetre movement can be enough to say this joint's unstable. Um, so we're simulating weight bearing. Now, it's a luxury if you have an assistant or a physio to do this for you. Um, if you don't, you can do it without an assistant. If you're a ballet dancer, you can go into demi-plie position and get them to go from squat to stand. Or you can do this sort of a thing where you put a roll under the forefoot to dorsiflex or tilt your floor of your bed up. Or you can um, rotate the foot out. And you're asking them to weight bear on and off the foot. Um, so I'll show you some abnormal cases so you know how to recognise the instability. Um, Tom nicely pointed out the AITFL, so that's it there on an oblique angle. We can see an abnormal ligament here. So just sort of scrolling down, you can see complete disruption of the fibres. The little blue ligament there, that's Bassett's ligament. I've often found that that's intact, even though MRIs called the whole thing gone. Um, it's irrelevant. It's the the surgeon just wants to know, is there instability in diastasis? So here we go on an abnormal case. Just watch the gap between the two bones there. So the, the movement's very small. It's hard to appreciate, but you can see that it's widening on the dorsiflexion and external rotation. So this patient, um, I, I can't actually remember... Oh, yeah. So they were 18. Um, sorry, I'll go back to the previous case. 18-year-old, wanted to get on the field as quick as possible, avoided surgery, went into a boot for six weeks. We repeated the exact study six weeks later and we couldn't any longer demonstrate the widening. Um, I'm not going to talk about surgery and whether that's best management, but it's just interesting. Some of the studies coming out of the UK are saying maybe we can avoid the tightrope repair in some patients. Um, this is a 32-year-old. Interestingly, she's married to a physio, so I thought, oh, well, you got good care there. You can see on her X-ray there's an insufficient overlap of the tibia and the fibula. And again, with dynamic dorsiflexion, external rotation, we can see the joints widening. It's nice to compare, so I always repeat this on the normal ankle as well. Um, the hardest thing is just staying in the same position. Obviously, it's quite subjective. You might think, oh, you know, you could really balls that up. You probably could. Um, but the best thing to do is to give them a cine loop of going from the external rotation position back to neutral and taking the dorsiflexion off. So if, if you can capture a cine loop, it's probably more effective and then you can go, sit on packs and measure it that way. The PITFL in the same patient, the 32-year-old that fell from a height and fell to pop, she had disruption of the um, posterior inter 
malleolar ligament here. So band three is nicely seen on ultrasound. If you angle upwards on that same sort of 45 degrees, plonky probe lateral to the Achilles and dorsiflex to see it well. Um, high ankle sprains um, don't always involve the syndesmosis. Sometimes it's the extensor retinaculum. Um, when do we go looking for mid and high ankle sprains? I'd like to propose that you always go looking for them. So all routine, inversion, eversion injuries, it's really quick to do. You run over Chopard joint, you run over your high ankle sprain. Giving information as to instability is the most valuable information.